Hello everybody, KP68 here again, Breaker Breaker. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing good out there. Uh, let's see, what have I got going on here? Oh yeah, um, this is going to be my permanent mobile setup. Uh, I don't know if you caught my last video uh, about my mobile setup. I had a temporary uh, modulator box in there. And uh, I'm getting ready to build my new one, the permanent one. And uh, I was going to do, I was going to wait till I got it completely built. And then do a video, but I thought, you know what, I'll uh, do a video here and show it uh, the, the pre-build of uh, the box and everything and what I'm going to put in there. And But uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be quite the process, but uh, boy, I guess I'm going to do this video. I don't have time this weekend. I won't have any time during the week. So I hate to put out a part one before I even have the part two ready to go. But just my work schedule is just unbelievably insane. Working my days off and tons of extra hours. Uh, so, oh well, I'll have to get back with you guys when I get it all uh, put together. But, uh, anyhow, like I said, there's always something in these videos that, uh, I proof watched them once and I go, oh man, I didn't say that right, or that's, could be interpreted in different ways. And, uh, it's not enough for me to redo the video. And, except for this, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I did this. Remember my last video, uh, I think it was RSP2, uh, the hookup. I inexplicably inexplicably wrote Y on here. That's a relay box. That should be labeled K. I, I can't, I don't know why I wrote Y on there. Um, unbelievable. And I didn't catch it when I was uh, proof watching it. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. But, oh well, what are you going to do? That's not going to be the first time. Or won't be, it wasn't the first time, it won't be the last time. I make a total ass out of myself, but <laughs> that should be K. Ah, Lord. Anyhow, let's go back over here. So, alright, once again, this case is by Hammond Manufacturing, steel, 100% steel case, really nice finish on this thing, and uh, it's the same case I did uh, 270's original motor mouth mold setup uh, inside of. When I ordered his, I ordered another one for me uh, at the same time, so this has been sitting around here collecting dust, had to pull the dust off there, 10-4, <laughs> but uh, anyhow, this is what I, this came, this is the modulator board I'm going to put in here, this is my redo of Motormouth's first design there. Um, you know what, I'll tell the story again, in case you didn't watch from one video. The only reason why I did this, now years ago, I bought this one here, I got into the Hi-Fi uh, arena, and got it in, long story short, I was like, this thing is awesome! I was just blown away, and I thought, you know what, I gotta have another one just for a backup. Who knows, lightning strike, power surge, you never know what's gonna happen. And I did not, there's once, I was never gonna go back to regular, uh, regular CB. So I got a hold of uh, old motor mouth mall there, and I said, hey, send me another one. I'm ready to buy another one. He said, oh, no longer making these. I have no plans to make any others. It's like, oh, crap. There's no way I'm going to go without this. So it's time to roll up my sleeves and, uh, make my own. That was a long, long process. Uh, <laughs> it took me a while. Very, very tedious. Uh, I ain't no genius up here. Somebody can might do it quicker than I could. But, uh, yeah. So this reason why, like I said, the reason why this is so raggedy looking, I pulled this out from my original uh, wideband base station. Uh, no sense. I don't have time to build another one. And it's a big job. It's a long process uh, making one of these. Um, so, over here, I'm going to go back in time just a little bit to show you what the kind of process I go through to make these. Um, do a YouTube search. Check out Photo, Photo Develop PCB. Uh, so go to YouTube, type in your search box, Photo Develop PCB. That's Papa Charlie Bravo PCB. Photo Develop PCB. Check that out. Uh, I don't have time to explain the entire thing. Um, like I said, my time is extremely limited, so check that out. Once you watch that, you'll get kind of an idea of what exactly what I do. So, um, let's see, I'll take you as far back as a, as a schematic. I'm going to tell you how I went about it. Oh, my God, drawing the schematics for that. But from the schematics, uh, like I said, oh, yeah, this is before I had Eagle CAD software. Like Eagle CAD software, um, once you have a proven design, schematics, uh, uploaded on the, uh, on, on the program, all you have to do is click Enter. Poof! Magically, all your trace patterns are done for you. Everything's fine. But this is before I had Eagle CAD, so I had to go from the schematics, start hand drawing the trace patterns on a piece of paper. Very tedious process. And then I had to keep rearranging the, the footprints for the for the components. And then uh, once I get it semi done, I would print it on a piece of paper, lay the piece of paper down, get the actual components I'm going to use on the final board. 
lay it on that piece of paper and start twisting and turning or I might go well this this pad here is a little bit too big now or this trace here is going to be in a way so I had to go back to uh, back of, oh yeah I did everything on Microsoft Paint and I would upload on Microsoft Paint and start drawing the schematics <laughs> that way and then uh Oh Lord, then I print out a piece of paper again, lay the components on there. Uh, this is too small, the trace, I'm gonna move this. Then I'd go back to the Microsoft Paint and, and adjust it. And I'd go back and forth and back and forth till I finally got the final uh, trace pattern I was gonna use. And this is it, this is the master, put my thumb on there so nobody can copy that. This is the master copy, master copy of the uh, my design, completely hand, hand drawn by me <laughs> on Microsoft Paint. Uh, this is printed out on overhead uh, projector transparency. There's two layers of print out twice and sandwich them together. Like I said, you'll understand more about this if you check out the video on uh, photo, de photo develop PCBs. So once I get the final trace pattern all ready to go, I use these printed or uh, pre-sensitized uh, circuit board. Um, yeah, this is a light, light proof package. So I go in a darkened room, cut this open, peel back a protective layer, all right, then I have a, uh, a picture frame. Take out the glass. I'll lay the board PCB down on, on, on the backing of the, of the uh, picture frame. Get the glass, or yeah, put that down. Get my trace pattern. Lay it on top of the, uh, lay on top of the circuit board. Put the glass on top and then clamp everything together and then bring it out, hit it with light. I think I exposed it for like that 10 minutes or so, depending on the strength of the light, the, the, the lumens of the light. But uh, once that's done, pull it out, and I have a developer solution ready to go. Put it down to the developer solution in a tray, switch that back and forth, and slowly start to see the trace patterns start to appear. Once that's developed, and I take it out of there, rinse it off, and then I get a ferric chloride solution in a tray. Now, depending on the strength, the concentration of the ferric chloride, the temperature of the ferric chloride, thickness of the copper, that's going to dictate how long it's going to take for the uh, copper to be etched away. So once you switch that back and forth over a amount of time, you'll see the copper all etched away. Take that out, rinse it off, and then uh, remove, uh, have a goo gone. Uh, remove any other kind of, uh, remove all the, uh, the uh, ferro chloride resist. And then, poof, there you go. There's this, there's the circuit board right there. Pretty cool, man. So once that's done, then I have to go to my drill press. Here's the kind of, drill bits I used. I since changed the drill bits I use. Um, the ones I use now are more supported. These have no support on them, and no matter how ha these drill bits here, no matter how hard I had them, uh, uh, you know, tighten into the chuck, or how much I choked up on the drill bit, sometimes they would tend to walk, like walk across, especially if it would catch a little bit of copper on there, the drill bit would kind of walk a little bit before it would start to bite, and hence that's why some of these are a little bit crooked. You know, I don't care. It's electronic the sound. Nobody's ever going to see it. Well, <laughs> we'll see it now, but... Uh, so get all the holes drilled out, and I have this X-ray. I've made a, a X-ray view board. I don't know if you can see that, it's exact X-ray view. I have the, all the holes already drilled out on that. If you can see right there, as I'm drawing this, I can glance over to here and make sure I hit all the holes. Because some of the ground plane, I didn't have uh, marked on, on on here. So, and it's a little bit of a guide. I can glance over and do that. So once that's done, start mounting components. Get all the components mounted in. And then there you go. So that's a long, long process. And like I said, I just don't have time. So I pulled this out of my original base station and uh, ready to use it. And also, I didn't want to tear apart what I have in my mobile now. I could take the, the board out of my mobile box and reuse it. But then I'll be without my mobile. So I can get be working on this, still have my mobile set up going. And then when this is done, just swap them out. So <laughs> quite the process there. But uh, starting to get all the parts laid out. Uh, there's the bobs, bob the knobs, <laughs> and then uh, there's my heat sink I'm gonna use for the Darlington. And the Darlington I'm gonna use. I had good luck with the uh, 2638. That's a Darlington all-in-one package. Now you could still use the uh, make your own Darlington pair of the like a, the NTE 152 in conjunction with the 21 quad two transistor. But uh, I've been using this, the uh, exact same one I used in my Black Beauty. Never had any issues with it, works great. And uh, over here, there's my nuts and bolts and uh, not lock. Uh, nuts and separate. And, and there's the uh, there's the radio right there, Cobra uh, 29 LTD ready to go. Um, I'm going to use a relay in here, I'm going to tighten that up. I'll uh, secure that so it's all in place. I'm going to use a relay, 12 volt send. 
to there to do the switching between transmit and transmit and receive. So this is from testing. Uh, it's so short net wire, but uh, yeah, it's it's I uh, got everything laid out, ready to go. Um, oh yeah, this is off frequency a little bit, so I'm gonna fix that before I uh, get everything all buttoned up. But uh, another th reason why I really like the uh, uh, motor mouse modulator setup. There's no, there's absolutely no modifications on the to the radio, well except for cutting cutting that trace in there. But if you go back to my one, I can't remember what my videos are. I explained how to do that. But uh, yeah, if there's no screwdriver in the radio. I mean, it is bone stock. Cut one little trace, boom, you're done. No modification to the radio. That's what I really like about this. But uh, I think I'm going to do this. Heat sink's going to go back here. Right there. Pan back here a little bit. The modulator board. Keep in mind, i got to clean this up. Modulator board can go right about there. Something like that. And then uh, you scan the four pin four pin mic jack for the uh, voltages and the signal voltage. That's going to be drilled out. We'll drill it out and uh, put it there. Probably do the, I don't know if I can do the keyer here, keyer jack or in the back of the radio. But uh, I don't know. But uh, yeah, these two screws right here, screw there, screw right there, take that out, pull this plate out, uh, make my markings, go over my drill press, start drilling. Same thing with the back panel, take that screw out, get the screw over here, pull this panel out, make all my markings, drill. I'll probably end up doing this pretty much exactly the same as I did the 270's uh, box. But uh, yeah, <laughs> like I said, I should have. I'd like to do the part two before I upload this, but I just don't have any time. My work schedule is crazy, but uh, I'll be out of that. It's going to be for the radio mount. But there you go. Oh, yeah. There's my shockwave. <laughs> like I was talking about your shockwave antennas. I just had to give myself a shockwave. <laughs> but, uh, oh, yeah. Get back to this. Now, using the photo develop uh, uh, process, you can make some intricate uh, designs here. This is from a uh, quad parametric EQ that I built. I built, had to do two boards. I was in the middle of etching this, and when my dad was still alive, I got an emergency phone call from him in the middle of etching this, and I had to leave right away. And I was such a scramble to leave, I forgot, <laughs> forgot about it. And I over etched it just a little bit there. I can still use that. It looks, it looks better on camera. It's a little bit over etched right there. I probably still could use it, but uh, anyhow, I had to do a new one to build my quad parametric EQ. But uh, also, you notice, oh, even though this is an audio circuit, I still did uh, all on ground plane. If you notice here, no ground plane, ground plane, just because it's going to be used in the RF environment. I don't know. Probably didn't have to, but that's why it's huge ground plane on there. That was a little bit of a challenge. Man, that was a big job getting all these traces the way I wanted them. But uh, there you go, my crazy uh, build, ready to go, and then I'll catch up with you guys when it's all done, whenever that may be. I'm not going to have any time during the week. It's Sunday. I don't know what time it is. Around like 5 o'clock, I think, so i got to go back to work tomorrow and work on my extra hour. So maybe next weekend I'll jump in and start uh, chopping it up. So anyhow, hope everybody's doing good out there. KP68, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Back out.